Okay, great. So I'm going to show you guys a video and I need everybody to have a pen and paper or pencil or something that they can take down some notes. So I'm going to show you guys a video with some animals in the ocean and what I want you guys to do is note some of the animals that you see and you observe and also what are the biotic and abiotic factors that you're going to observe. So if you guys remember, if you guys recall, I think Anika went through this with you, right? What are abiotic and what are biotic factors? Anybody can refresh me on what the, what what those are? Anyone? It doesn't matter, guys. What 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 do we mean when we say biotic factors in the environment? What are those? Anybody want? Hold on. Let me see somebody saying in the chat. So the biotic factors, yes, the biotics are the living components. Thank you, Danielle. And the abiotic are the non-living components of the ecosystem, right? And they affect other organisms or they actually shape how the ecosystem works, right? So can somebody give me an example of what a biotic factor is and what an abiotic factor is? Okay, yes, Robin is saying what an, a, an example, apart from describing or saying what it is or the definition, what is an example of an abiotic factor? All right, let me give you one example of an abiotic factor. So one would be, okay, Robin gave me one that's walked on. Anybody else can give me another one? Sunlight, great, Daniel. Any any other one that you guys are aware of? Yeah, yes, we have sunlight, we have water, we have temperature, we have air, we have the soil. So those are our abiotic factors. And our biotic factors would be like what, guys? Yes, the plants and the animals, the different bacteria that are present, any form of living things, right? Great. All right. So establish that what that is. You guys remember about the different um relationship that e that exists in the ecosystem? You guys recall that? All right, give me an example of the different type of relationship that exists. Yes, yeah, so certain animals depend on plants for protection. That's great. Yes, you have the food chain, so you have the feeding relationship. So one animal is the consumer, that other one is a producer. So you have a prey and predator type of relationship that is going on. That's great. William and Jumin and Abriana, are you guys following? Because I know you guys are a bit younger. So are you guys following? Yes, Mitchell, following. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right, great. yes. Right, so we're going to go into the video. So everybody have their pen and paper on them to write down things. Yes. All right, great. We're going to we're going to start. We're going to start now. So just Water, the liquid that oceans are made of, and it fills endless depths. Only few will venture out into the endless open ocean of this vast underwater world. Most of the ocean inhabitants live in the city, as it were, like human societies. Very close together, with friendly neighbours and nasty co-tenants. While dangerous robbers lurk around at the edge of town. To 
assert yourself here, you have to be equipped with all kinds of tricks and clever strategies, or lie and cheat. Coral reefs are the largest structures in the world. They're giant submerged metropolises. As you guys are seeing so far, right? So they're showing what underwater looks like and it's no city of Atlantis, definitely not. The last city you guys ever heard about that. So we're not looking at no city of Atlantis. Please. We're looking I heard at it. Last year. <laughs> Yes, I'm making a joke, guys. But we're just looking at what it, um, what is underwater look like, what the city, the city life underwater look like. So, what are some of the animals you guys have seen so far? Anybody can point out. Oh wow, Robin actually watched this documentary two days ago. So you watched the whole documentary, or you watch only some of it? Oh, wow, okay, that's are real. great. All right, that's great. Um, so what's the Martians are real? Okay, what you said? Martians are real. I didn't hear what hear what you said. Martians are real. If marsh are if mushrooms, miss miss Martians are real. If Martians, I don't think so. They, I don't think Martians are. Real. Miss, a Russian boy said he lived a past life as a Martian. Oh, you can't really believe everything everybody says there, but um, miss, 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 so. miss, let me tell you something, miss. No one taught him about the stars. He was a child prodigy. He told this story when he was seven years old. He knew about the stars, and no one taught him, miss. Uh, okay, so he, I think that's a little where, weird. Where, where have you actually heard about him? On YouTube. Okay, because you said Martians, and I don't know any type of evidence that says that Martians exist, so. It so I, I can't speak to that. Okay, so guys. A little time at the end of something, I'm sure I'll show you the video. Okay, all right. Afterwards, we're going to continue a bit. Somebody was saying something. All right, we're going to continue a bit, and then afterwards, we might stop somewhere to this. Millions of different inhabitants live in these cities. A universe with coral palaces and soaring towers. Noah's Ark. Every neighborhood has a chief. The entire street belongs to this guy. No trespassing, okay? A typical large city with all the noise and ruckus. So what, are, what are those um, those fishes right there? Anybody knows what? Lionfish. They're what? Lionfish. Okay, great. So you know that. So so far we've been seeing some different animals. What are some of the animals apart from the lionfish you guys seen in the video so far? The eel, the grouper. Yes. Great. Uh, yes, Daniel. There were dolphins there as well. Arty, arty, sharks. Yes, a parrotfish. So the dolphins, the the lionfish, the eels, the the sharks. Those are what abiotic or biotic factors. Biotic. The biotic factors. And in this case, what we're looking at, what would be the abiotic factor? Great job, Robin. Coral. Actually, no, it's not the coral. Mm -mm, not the corals. Because they are animals. They are, they are living things. The corals are actually living things. Yes, they are animals. Yes, in a sense, but do they're not? Miss, yes, they would definitely be animals, but we we'll just say that they're living things. So, yes, all it's right, scientific so Natalie, proof not, not that coral is an Natalie. animal. Yes, great, that's great, guys. That's great. So, what we're talking about, what are the abiotic factors? So, definitely, Natari is telling me the rocks, the caves, the walls are very great observation. Natari, great job. So, we're going to continue with the video a bit. Even this little porcupine fish bleats around. It creates this sound with its swim bladder. 
two small harlequin shrimps are nibbling on this blue sea star. You guys see the, the, um, the shrimp right here, right? And it's actually feeding on the stars, right? You, you realize this? Is the star dead? No, not really. It's not dead, but the, the shrimps are actually feeding on it. They actually, so the shrimp are actually eating the starfish. You definitely, you can definitely feel it. <laughs> Daniel is saying you. So if someone else shows up, he will catch hell. Another harlequin shrimp busy pulling a bite out of a sea star. eels in disagreement. A scorpion fish shuffles across the ocean floor. Everything and everybody makes a lot of noise. A boxer crab threatens everybody that comes by, holding two poisonous anemones in its claws. So guys, you know what the anemone is. Another thing that also persons might not be aware of, because they look kind of like plants, right? But they're actually not. You guys are aware of that? Animals, animals, people. Yeah, they're actually yes. Who was that? Do you mean yes? They're actually animals, and most of them, what they do actually is that they have little tentacles, and they usually sting their prey. It's that's the only thing in the sea that is immune to this is the clown. Yeah, the clownfish, because the clownfish actually go, uh, move around in like their slime. Okay, so wait, I guess... Is, is the boxer... Wait, Mr. Yeah. Is the boxer crab pick it up or is it born with it? What? No, it's picking it. It actually has it in its claws. It's not born with it. Yeah, so they're very poisonous. Okay. Some of them, some of some of them are actually really poisonous to human beings as well. They have some really toxic ones that are out there. So the only ones that are actually immune to them are the clownfish because they actually, what they do is they swim around and actually engulf themselves in some of their slime or something like that. So what I bet is that they're actually not affected maybe by Because it's immune to it? No, they're not necessarily, no, the clownfish aren't necessarily immune to it. What they do is that they engulf themselves with some slime that is actually, that the animal. She's actually, asking about the crab. No, the crab, I don't think it's an immune, well, it doesn't seem to be affecting it, the boxer crab, so I'm guessing it is immune to it. But the clownfish are one of the few um, animals that I know that are in the ocean that are actually immune to them. Clownfish is hiding there. Yeah. All right, we're going, to, we're going to continue with the video and then we can continue. We'll stop at intervals and discuss what's going on. I want to watch the whole video. Guys, the video is 50 minutes long. I don't think we're going to be able don't to watch care. the whole video. And you guys have your brain to go on. At least the anemone reef looks peaceful. Or does it? The clownfishes are having a huge squabble. Who does this anemone belong to? We can hardly see this fish, but he's easy to hear, a crocodile fish. Does this giant puffer fish hear something? Oh yes, Robin actually gave a good point that yes, the clownfish will actually panic when the anemone actually close because that's where they actually live in and reproduce. So, so that practically they act as like their housing or shelter. So when they close, they get all panic and start moving around and trying to find somewhere else to live, which is why probably in this case... This is the, the urchins, means they're the coming urchins. in. Yes. And they want to take over the room. <laughs> So I was saying that in this case, sometimes they will fight each other to actually get the shelter from the, the sea anemones, okay? And yes, as Jumin, I think, was pointing out, these are sea urchins. It's a ray that's getting away. A dispute amongst the members of the cichlid family. Who is stronger, 
and especially who is louder. Two Walkman fish are noisily trying to woo a female. Big city noise everywhere, especially when a large structure is being torn down. Everybody lives in their own way in this noisy metropolis. Some hover above it all, but others are more down to earth and literally live in the coral sand. These goat fishes, for example, they plow through the ocean floor and catch smaller animals between their teeth. They use their barbels like a dowser. With All right, guys, so it's saying that the goldfish right here, so they will dig, so when they say plow, they mean that they dig through the sand and they will actually get the small organisms, either plants or animals, and they'll eat them through their teeth. And they have um, a little flap-like thing at the bottom, like at their, around their chin area. I don't know if you guys saw, and it's called a barbel, and it helps in detecting um, organisms because they use some type of electric field to be able to detect them. You guys are following so far? Yes, me. Great. With them, they can detect even the weakest electric fields that point them towards small prey. Yes, These gobies also dredge through the sand and feed on what they find in there. There's another way of finding prey in the sand. This blue spotted stingray uses its wings like shovels and there's always a chance of stealing something. Oh, yes, Daniel, While one works... Point that some of these animals especially because of their color they can easily blend in so they're able to hide from predators that will try to kill them or attack them others just stand by and feed on what watch a video about something a piece of crab what that means this thing like this thing was hiding in the sand and the seahorse was coming and then it just jumped up and tried to just swallow the seahorse okay we can try to watch the videos after i don't remember what the video's name so Okay, after, but we're watching this video now, so we'll, watch, we'll try, try to get a chance to watch it after, okay? Or a muscle. You have to be very familiar with this area to find the best morsels. This trigger fish uses a strong stream of water. The fish blows away the sand to unearth whatever is hidden inside it. Others are quick to steal whatever they can. The trigger fish is a commanding fish, and most reef inhabitants are easily intimidated by him, except for these strange visitors that don't seem to show fear. In any case, it's best to cover them up with sand. It's not easy for a small fish in a big city. There's always somebody with bad intentions. Saying something in chat. Oh yes. Oh, you saw one. You talk. You're talking about this. This thing right? This and you have to be extra careful. Right okay, I'm just going to continue then. Careful not to get swallowed, like these moon rasses, for example. So okay, it's all. So guys, if you realize there is a school of fish that is happening right now that they're all together and anybody knows why? They're super small. Okay, that's great. Yeah, they're very, some of them are small. Yeah, for protection, that's great.
always safer for the smallest among the reef inhabitants to show up in schools. It's difficult to keep an eye out for only one little fish, and as a result the predator often grabs blindly at nothing and comes up empty. To show up in a big mob is always safest. Others are easily distracted at the sight of so much prey all at once. This easy-going giant puffer fish would never have a chance here anyway. Being part of a school of fish is always the best protection from predators. The slow ones are being ignored. No danger here. sometimes it's very hard to catch them and I was saying before that we having so many fishes at one time actually confuses some of them. The school distributes the danger. If there are a thousand fishes any of them can be the target and 999 are going to be just fine. What about loners or those that live as a couple? Right, so hold on, guys. Let me just ask some questions. Are seahorses? Yeah, they're seahorses, but they're blending in. Blending with the coral. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so. All right, just some refreshers to go through what we've been through so far. Can everybody see this, or do I need to go into full screen? All right, so I'm going to go into full screen. Um, so just a refresher so far, because we don't want to go too much into the video and then you guys can't remember. So if you guys recall at the start of the video, you guys saw some shrimp and a sea star. What was happening? What kind of relationship? Was the shrimp was eating the sea star. Yes, yeah, so it was a feeding relationship. So you said the shrimp is what? The prey or the predator? predator. Something so small predator. is destroying the predator. it. And the sea star it was its prey. That's great, guys. Um, William, I, I've been, I don't hear much from William and Abriana. So I, want, I, want, I want to make sure that you guys are following what is going on. Jazz, I'm not, I haven't heard anything from Jazz. Jazz as yet. You guys are following? Are we? Okay. Yes, we, okay. yes, yes. So I don't want Jumin and Robin and Daniel to be answering all the questions. I want to hear from our younger ones as well. I want you guys to give them a chance to answer the questions as well. So, all right, so the next one, you guys remember the goldfish? How did the gold feed with their little things? Jumin, Jumin, give them a chance. Just give them a chance. Also, the other ones are saying. Yes, yeah, so we're saying that Beast, but how can Robin answer? Robin, you watched the video already, you know, so you shouldn't be answering. You should want to give everybody a chance to answer to make sure everybody is following. How about Ariko? Ariko, what do you remember? Or do you want to speak, Jazz? I said that you have your mic unmuted. What does the giant stingray feed? No, I was asking how does the, the goldfish feed? You, you remember what was happening with the goldfish? A little. A little, tell me, tell me a little bit of what you remember then. I can remember it eats little fish. Yeah, it was saying that it eats small organisms and how does it go about eating for the most part? What does it do? Jazz, you want to help Arika? Yes, who wants to help out Arika? Help him out, please, 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 please. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so Jazz wants me to repeat, and 
So we're discussing how the goldfish feed. And before we're saying what is the relationship between the shrimp, the shrimp and the sea star, we're saying that they have a feeding relationship. So the shrimp is the predator and the sea is the prey because the shrimp was feeding on the sea star. And then my second question was how does the goldfish feed? And then Arico, my lovely friend here, was telling me that it eats small animals. And we're saying, yes, it does eat small organisms, but how does it actually go about and feeding on those small organisms. Oh, you switch your device. Okay. And I'm just going to tell you, since, since you don't remember, just refreshing you that what it's. Please, please, miss, let me do it, miss. Please, I'm begging you. All right, Jumin. Okay. You have the floor. You can speak then. Okay, miss. So go fish feed at, at the bottom, like at the sand. Yes. They use the little things under their mouth. To tend to sense even the tiniest shockwave. Yes, the bar. They eat through their teeth. Yeah, so they dig around in the sun and they're able to eat the small organisms that are present there. All right. How does the giant stingray feed? I don't want to hear from 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 Daniel and I don't want to hear from Jume and I want to hear from somebody else. How about you? I want to hear from me. Okay, miss. I will. So giant stingray. How oh, just says that what what what. We're going to say, okay, great. So you want to answer the next question, Jazz, about how does the giant stingray feed? Jazz, you hearing me? Hello, Jazz, you there? Your mic. Oh, she's probably typing. Oh, you're typing. Okay, I'm, I'll give you some. Why don't you guys use your mic? Seriously. Jumin, so just let, let everybody do at their own pace. Okay, so while Jazz is thinking, while Jazz is thinking, we're going to make somebody else answer the next question. So, Natari, Natari, you want to answer a question? It says, why is it beneficial for fish to show up in schools? Natari, I think you can answer that question. What, 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 what they're saying in the video as to why they show up in schools. All right, so Natari is going to answer that question. So I'm going to give Natari some time, probably. He needs some time to think about it. And Jazz is still thinking about the answer. <coughs> it's guys, help <laughs> Sorry, you ready? Yeah, um, it's because you know how um sardines are uh, in these like big, big packs. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's to decrease the um. It's to decrease the chance of a specific sardine being targeted. Okay. Since there's so many, they, um, one specific sardine or a few won't be targeted. Oh, and right. they can okay. make certain maneuvers and patterns to avoid getting killed. Oh, wow. So you phrased that well. Very intelligent. You love your answer, Natari. So basically, they do that for a person. That's very good. A very good answer. You, you ready for me, Jazz? Still waiting on Jazz to, to give us the answer for the third question. And then we're going to go back to the video and watch some more. Um, we actually have seven minutes left in the presentation. Do you guys want to... Continue, or you want to use your break? Can we use the break to watch the Martian video? You want to use the... I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much information one time. Miss, can we use the break to watch the Martian video I was talking about? The Martian video? We'll see if we can get to that. So, Jazz, you're still, you're still thinking about that? Somebody wants to help out, Jazz? Okay, Miss, I'll help her out. If I want to help out Jazz. Okay, Jumin, since you're always ready and willing to do something, you can help out Jazz. 
Okay, miss. So the giant stingray. So they feed their bottom dollars, you know, their bottom dollars. So they use their for the fins, I think. Yeah, their fins. And then they push around the sand to look for mollusks. Yes, that's great. So you heard that, Jazz? That was what you're going to say. I'm not hearing anything from Jazz, probably. I don't know if she's still typing or something. But her mic is unmuted, so I thought she was going to speak. Okay, so let's go back to the video. Seahorses, for example, camouflage themselves to look like the coral branches they're holding on to. difficult to see. Where is the animal here? I see it. 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 Okay. Is they do everything to not look like themselves. Ornate ghost pipe fishes. They're inseparable, a couple. The female is already carrying eggs in her extended belly. Before long, the male will fertilize her eggs. They are still regular fishes, despite their unique costume. This one looks like torn off seagrass. The spiny wasp fish rocks back and forth in the current. Not a monster, but ingenious camouflage. A spider crab that's decorated its head with a sponge. This will deter any predator. Another great camouflage. A barrel decorated with rocks. Only the movement of the gills betrays this stonefish. Even a smack with a fin doesn't bother him. The fish knows it will not hurt him. It only shoves him a little further to the side. Awesome. Okay, so Jazz actually gave her answer a little bit late, but that's great. Oh, your internet is acting up. I'm so sorry to hear. And it's windy. All right. I still hope they can still hear the rest of the session, though. Similarly tough are its cousins, the scorpion fishes. They lie there as if dead, especially when others around them freak out. And even when moray eels fight with lionfishes for food. The scorpion fish lies in wait for its chance. And then immediately becomes completely motionless again. The only difference is that it raises its dorsal fins with the poisonous barbs inside. It's completely still but now also armed. This large anglerfish virtually blends into the background tangle of algae and leaves. Right now, the anglerfish is on high alert. It ejects a large cloud in order to throw off predators. It's not the time to feed or catch anything. Its angling rod is lying flat on the fish's back. The white tip at the end of the rod is used to lure prey. Also guys, I wanted to tell you that some interesting fact that I found about the anglerfish, well actually the male anglerfish. So basically, what happens really is that the male anglerfish is actually really small and weak. 
in comparison to the female anglerfish. And what most times they do is that they go through their lives barely finding any food. So like, the, unlike most fishes, like, you know, when they're small and they can't actually fend for themselves and they tend to outgrow it, that is actually not the case for the anglerfish. So he'll practically be a bit hungry for his entire life. Isn't that a bit sad? So what actually happened, he is also born with a great sense of smell, right? And what the female does is actually gives off some type of perfume, really, and that the anglerfish is actually attracted to that. And they will spend their entire life actually searching for that scent. So they actually... Not as so they're looking for their soulmate, I guess, but they're trying to find the female. It's 10.30, miss. Oh, oh, all right. Um, so I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to. Can I watch a Martian video, please?